How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Mushoku Tensei Jabba's Reincarnation episode review recap. Uh, today's episode is episode 14, entitled No Such Thing as a Free Lunch. And um, you can tell by my voice, I am. Uh, man, I am. The, the ending to this has me shook. So I'm, I'm in between. I wanted to just talk about that instead of just going through my rundown. I got my notes right here. I didn't write anything else down on here, but <clears throat> maybe I, I might jot down some thoughts as they come to me. But yeah, um, let's go ahead and get into this episode because I'm going to continuously say over and over again, I still think this is the best anime of 2021 and it's, uh, it, it is giving me some feels up in here. So, um, if you want to catch more feels like this every Sunday, please give me a uh, little subscribe right there. Hit that like button and drop me a comment down below. I genuinely love hearing from everyone who watched my videos. Whether you watch the whole thing or a little bit. Whether you like what I say or I don't. Or you don't. Please. Please. Let me know what you think. <clears throat> so, if you remember last time, you know, RJ or uh, if I can say his name correctly. Rujerd, uh, him and our buddy Rudeus, they were going, you know, they, they freed these beast people, well, these beast children. Uh, also, uh, Rudy went back to free this, apparently, silver sacred beast, which is a really good thing that he did, but also a really bad thing that he did, because he ended up getting captured, and the guy, man, um, I tell you one thing about this show. This show does a really great job of making you, I won't say jump to conclusions, but jump to feelings. Because then you get upset with some of these characters. Because I was definitely upset with that beast guy that captured him. And, um, yeah. This, it just, yeah. Just follow me. <laughs> so, the opening for this show. Which, by the way, they have a new intro. Um, I've always said I loved how they do intros in this show. Because the intro of this shows the... Beast Village, which is called uh, Doldia, shows the people working, uh, shows them roasting a giant, looks like flying lizard thing. There was also a, uh, they, they have tropical birds, even though it's a forest area. They have a nice little muddy river, lake kind of situation going where they can fish. It's just showing day-to-day -day lives. The, the children are cute, the women are hot, the men are strong. It's just how it is. Uh, but the intro... Before we get our, our our opening song intro, very funny. We have Rudeus in his mind with his you know his thirty four year old voice insights, basically doing a parody of like the house showing television shows, kind of like a MTV's Cribs. He's like, you know, look at this. You know, I have a great bed. It's a bit of a bug bug problem. Has a literal shithole place for him to use the bathroom. Uh, talks about getting his meals he's still eating he's eating the delicacies of the demon uh country but i think i think he likes it like he enjoyed eating what he was eating um <laughs> every morning he's welcome to a cold shower because the female guard she looks at him calling him scum and she just throws the water on no one's listening to him by, by the mind because he keeps trying to say i didn't do anything it's a misunderstanding but during this little intro he talks about oh yeah the bars you know the the bars in here no no one can get out i can't even bend them but of course people can get in here because it's a cell criminals are thrown in and that's why the rent is free it's very it's a very funny intro um so he's naked they have taken not just his clothes they took his clothes his staff obviously but he's just butt naked and you know he's jotting down the days he's in there and he's thinking to himself, I could get out of here right now, but I'm in the middle of a forest and I can't get out. So, you know, he, he wouldn't know where to go. He could be running in the wrong direction for miles. So he says, he's going to sit there and be calm. And, you know, the beast woman keeps calling the deviant and throwing water on him. He's like, he makes a joke that he might develop a new fetish, you know, but, you know, he's praying to the goddess to save him. It looks like he's... I don't know what goddess he's praying to, but maybe uh, maybe he has his own beliefs. Who knows? I know, but who knows? <clears throat> um, the art for the art for this series all around is amazing. 
Um, Studio White Fox is amazing, just flat out, because we're getting we're getting that that mappa kind of feel from Demon Slayer, where it's not just drawn, but there's the three D butterflies opening up their wings. Stuff looks really good. So, um, while he's staring up at a garden spider, if you see, if you don't know what a garden spider is, after this, Google it, please. If you're not watching this on your phone, just tap, you know, tap, type up real quick on your phone, garden spider. So if you see that garden spider, it looks like he's kind of just taking everything in, just thinking, he's like, you know what? It's not going to make any rash moves. He's still saying it's not going to make any rash moves. You know, going to wait for, he's waiting for RJ and Ares to come and get him, you know, and, um, just, again, we're showing her what a beautiful place this is, and they're hammering that home for a reason. Beast Lady comes back. Of course, she's not listening to him. He's staring at her bountiful, bouncing chest, but he gets more cold water, and, you know, the next day, he's wondering if anything had happened to them. He's starting to go a little bit stir-crazy, and it's three days of him waiting for them, and um, it's worth noting that even though he's in a different world, he is actually marking... The days, you know, when you uh, see prisoners in media mark, you know, you're marking down the days or the people who have been shipwrecked and they do four lines and a cross for five. He's doing the Japanese way where they slowly make out the kanji for five. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting that he still has all, it's really cool. He still has all that knowledge from his previous life. So, yeah. Um, day four, he's bored. Day five, another person is thrown in there with him, but he has his clothes. And, you know, Rudy's just laying down, all just butt naked, butt booty naked. And the guy's like, you're pretty confident for a naked guy. Because he says, welcome, new guy. And he just jumps up. And uh, my understanding of Japanese, when I'm listening to it, he's basically saying he's his senpai. But when you translate it, I've been in here longer than you. So you're going to listen to me. And the guy's like, all right, you're the boss, boss. Um... So, what did you do to get in here? The guy's name is Geese, which immediately made me think of uh, King of King of Fighters. Yeah, King of Fighters, Art of Fighting, Rapukin. Uh, he got caught cheating while gambling. And Rudy is naming stuff that we know in our world with gambling and a couple of Japanese gambling games. He's like, I don't know what that is, but I was playing Dice Balls. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, so what are you in here for? I hugged a silver dog, and now I'm here. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, you're the guy everybody's talking about." And Rudy's like, "Ain't there some stuff like everybody like they really still talking about me in this place?" Okay. Um, and why he's calling, you know, he when he introduced himself as Rudy, he's like, "Man, it sounds like I heard that name before." And Rudy's like, "Well, it's not really a rare name, but in these parts it is. That's it's important to know. It looks like um, Roxy and her group have made headway, or possibly Paul." Possibly uh, Lilith and her daughter Amelia. Who knows? Who knows? Um, <clears throat> so he, he being Rudy, moves close and is asking. He's, like, he's asking if he has met anybody that met the description of RJ and Ares. You know, um, and of course, <laughs> of course, he's like, hey, don't get too familiar because he's getting too close to him, right? He is again butt naked, and you know he's frantic because he didn't do anything and. He wanted to know where they are. And the most hilarious thing is, uh, what's his name? The uh, Geese is making it seem as if he has gotten abandoned. He's like, I know I haven't been ditched. I haven't been abandoned. Um, he's just nervous. Now, one of the most funny things is it's nighttime now. And um, technically, technically, Rudy is actually worried about them because it shouldn't have taken them this long to get to him. But now it's nighttime, and this is the thing I love about this show. When I say that's adult, yes, it has adult things, very much adult themes, and it has like the lewd stuff, not really fan servicey, but lewd stuff. This is something you don't get to see a lot. He's getting a massage from this dude, mind you. Rudeus is still butt naked, and the massage is really good. So he's like letting out some moans and stuff, and there's a moonlit sky. It's very, very erotic, and it's it's. It's 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 not really funny. It's just interesting. And he's like talking to him. He's like saying, you know, what are you good at? He's like, well, I'm good at a lot of stuff. He's like, you know, can you please a hundred women. He's like, I'm good with maybe one or two, boss. And after going through a couple of things, he says, would you be able to, you know, run all the way to the port of Zan from here? 
He's like, you talking about getting out? He's like, yeah, I'm worried about my crew. He wants to know what's going on. And the dude's like, well, you know what? I can go by myself if you get me out. And Rue's like, what? And he's like, and he's just flat out saying, you didn't do anything. People are going to come back to get you. Well, um, as, you know, Rue's just like, he's had enough. He's like, screw this. I'm going to get myself out of here. I'm going to fight all these girls. You know what? I'll burn this village to the ground while I'm at it. And dude is like, grabbing him by his leg. He's like, no, boss, you can't do this. Don't don't get yourself in too much trouble. And when they finally make it to the door, they notice there's no guards. The guard lady, they I think she's a dog, a dog. She's a dog person. Um, she's not there. No one's there. He's like, why is it smoky? And it's really hot. And we get a nice little close up shot of Rudy's demon eye, his uh his eye that lets him see into the future a bit. And both of them can see this, but the village is now on fire. And he's like, did you do this? He's like, no, I didn't. All right, it's time for us to get out because uh, Ember floats in, lights his bed on fire. How are we going to do that? He grabbed a piece of clay, turned it into a key, unlocked it. He could have gotten out a long time ago. He, They run and jump over. His clothes and stuff are there. He's getting dressed. He has the staff. They're running for it. And we are greeted with the haunting image of a beast woman being stabbed in the chest by a dude. It's a raid. They're being raided. And Rudeus and Geese, they're running across this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this, this rope ladder bridge above. And these dudes, they're, they're killing up the men. They're beating up the adults. They're kidnapping the children. These are the ones who have been kidnapping the children. And Rudy's in his mind. He's like, this is too much. Like, yeah, these people pissed me off and they annoyed me. But this is all, this is a bit much. He's watching kids being kidnapped and people being killed. And Geese is like, all right, so we got to get out of here, right? And Rudez is like, they're going to owe me one. And he's like, yeah, let's do this, ball. Geese, I, I love a character that is ride or die and will roll with you. Sometimes the characters that call you boss, they're, they can be kind of tropey and annoying. This dude is great because he's like, let's go. Rudeus, of course, he's using his non-incantation magic. You know, he's on his Edward Alric. Makes the ground below, the guy below them, sink into that mud hole like he do. And uh, Geese jumps down, stomps him. Now, Geese is like, man, this hurts, but we knocked him out. And Rudeus is going to gather up all as much cold air as he can and makes it rain. He makes it rain, get rid of all of that uh, fire and smoke because the beast people were being hurt because they have keen senses. The smoke was killing them. So after he makes it rain, the guy that actually uh, incapacitated him and called him was like, hey, thank you for putting that. He's like, wait a minute, it's you? We'll talk after all this is done. I'm going to get the children. Can you help me out with that? He's like, let's do it. So... <clears throat> They, they being Geese, Rudy, and this guy, we find out later his name is Gaze, G-E-Y-E-S, Gaze. Gaze, they, they slicing up dudes, stabbing dudes, they, they save some of the children. But, lo and behold, who walks up behind them than that guy that helped smuggle them in there? He has, has a girl, you know, by the hand, this dude's nasty, like, this dude is, he is evil, evil. Not just not just because he got a scar, because sometimes scars can be good guys, right? This dude is fondling this beast girl's chest. He's like, man, you believe someone actually pays for these freaks? Of course, this this is actually literal racism, actually. Yeah, this is funny. This is literal racism. Um, pardon me, pardon me. That's my that's my Digimon. Pardon my interruption. So he he introduces himself. He is the North Saint Dalius. Uh, actually, make sure I didn't. I did skip ahead for the name, but he is the North Saint Gallius the Cleaner, and so he, you know, Rudy, like, okay, so this makes a lot of sense now, and he, and and you know, uh, Gallius says, yeah, you know, we use your your buddies to help with these distractions. He's like, okay, so that's why it's taking them a while to come and get me. Makes a lot of sense. And he's 
Of course, his appropriate title, Rude's appropriate title, is the Kennel Master. He's part of Dead End. He is technically Dead End, right? They call him Dead End. And he's saying, hey, man, you might as well just join me, bro. It's, forget all these people. Now, literally, he says, sue me, my sin guy. But translator is like, nah, no thanks, no can do. I can't do it. And he's saying, bro, you're going to, you're definitely going to regret this. And he's like, so your dead end's going to play the hero, right? Gaze comes in, uses the girl as a shield because he throws her into it. And while they were talking, the beast men were, you know, gathering around him. And they try to jump him. Nah, he's stabbing, cutting, slicing, dodging. He knows North, North God style of sword fighting. Which, I appreciate this show, this book, this, this, this media having its own, like its own names for things not just the magic but the sword fighting and everything else i appreciate that because now we can actually see not just um uh gasoline not just you know our other beast lady who was one of the black fang black fang of the i mean a fang of the black wolf not just how strong she is not just how strong paul is we see how strong another north sword fighter is and a guy that's apparently called a, a north saint that's got to be a rank or something anyway um, he gets a chance to, he slices my guy, Gaze, from basically his midsection up here, and we can see that thing tearing through, and he gets the girl back, and he's like, all right, so, so, dead end, you're not going to try to attack me, because Rudy's frozen in his feet, and dude is walking past him, and Rudy's just like, I'm not like, he's not like RJ, he's not like Rujard, he can't just throw his life out there for Chill, even if there's children that he doesn't know. But then the girl screams, help me. In the beast people language. I love how they, they put the Japanese at the bottom. They, they make up their own language for these type of languages. I love it. So she's saying, help me. He's like, he's kind of snaps out of it. Geese is like, are you sure you're okay with this? Before he can even say yes or no, a silver beast puppy jumps through and bites this dude on the arm and... Rudy does a wind shot, knocking him, knocking him away. Geese gets the girl. And we are privy to hearing Rudy's heartbeat like. We can hear it. He's he's holding his chest. He's like, okay, I'm all in. I mean, I, I might as well see this through the end. And he says out loud, I'm sorry, dude. I can't let Dead End be a villain. So Silver Beast moves in. Rudy is using his eye to predict where the dude is moving. So he's using mud shots. And the dude's dodging him. He's like, man, he it, he said this earlier. Dude is super strong. So he does a nice little back bend dodge from Silver Silver Puppy Beast. And he's cut. Rudy's using platform at the platform to get away. He can even see the guy draw a knife to throw at him. Because that's part of the North God uh, fighting style. It's unfortunate, though, because Rudy, he can see it, but he can't do anything. He gets stabbed in the foot, in the, in the thigh. And right when dude's going to cut him, Silver Beast bites this dude again. Silver Beast is able to dodge an another knife hit. And we get we get our, our MVP of the episode. Geese throws a bag of dirt in his man's face. That was enough for Rudy. Get that giant staff up. Coalesce some magical energy. And obliterates this guy. I don't know if it's light magic. It certainly wasn't fire magic. But we get the nice little... The updated DBZ. This is what Super should do when you're doing the lines of energy. Because we get the lines of energy that makes the guy's face go away. Makes Rudy's face go away. This dude was blasted against the tree. I don't know if he did. Looked like he lost an arm in that exchange. But Rudy passes out because obviously he's used a lot of mana for the eye for his magic. And he's just, is ecstatic. He's just like, hey, good job, man. But the, I got to talk about that whole fight scene because it looks like it seems like i'm going through it when it comes to fight scenes and stuff i love covering them because i don't have to speak about them too much i can just tell you the real cool parts of some of the stuff that happens you gotta watch this stuff you gotta see this because when when silver beast that's what i'm gonna call him when silver beast jumps out we get a nice little trio shot of you know silver beast rudy geese and if you notice most of the time and when Rudy has these parties, he is in the center. He is he is the leader. He is the captain. I I love a shot like that. 
I hope I can get something like that for the thumbnail because that was fantastic. But Rudy passes out. When Rudy wakes up in this morning, you know, a little silver beast is licking his face. But who's also there? It's Eris in her redhead glory. Um, she calls Geese a monkey face because she's like, hey, you defeated the North Saint. The That monkey face guy was going on about it. He's like, North Saint. Okay. He's trying to process. He's like, so we won. And both gays and the 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 dog beast woman that had mistreated him, their version of bowing, they're on their bellies. Remember, they're beast people. So they're on their bellies. They say, we'll take any punishment you give us. We are so sorry for what we did. And the chief then comes out and says, yo, yo on behalf of the Dodolda people, I got to tell you, I appreciate you. Thank you once again. And Rudy, you know, his cheeks are all blushy and kind of looks like he wants to cry. But he's like, he's like, cool. I did a good thing. He may have, you know, he, he uses the excuse saying, I need, they're going to owe me one. He did a really good thing. Even RJ. RJ was pleased. And Rudy says, well, more importantly, you know, I, I was worried about you two. What happened? And Eris, she's so funny. She's like, it was horrible. She was happily telling him a story. Of course, RJ had met up with the uh, chieftain's forces, and Rudy was kind of surprised he didn't fight them because RJ's not good with communicating, but he told them what happened, that they had rescued the children and blah, 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 blah. And actually, they went back and killed the rest of the smugglers. At first, he said defeat. He's like, no, they slaughtered the rest of the smuggling ring. And apparently, the port of Zant was going to try to frame the crew for everything that happened. But of course they no, they did not let that happen. No, 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 not in my house. So Eris protects the was gonna protect the children while uh Root not Rudy, right, RJ and the crew went after everybody and, and Eris happily protected those children. She loves remember she loves beast people. The the boreous great rat people of the castle love beast people. And um Rudy was noting that it's probably in her blood it's probably in her blood to, uh, you know, enjoy this battle, enjoy the spectacle, just enjoy the fact they were able to do all this with Beast People, for Beast People. And um, he says, man, so it'll be a great story to tell when you get back home, you know, of a boy is a great rat being in this wonderful Beast Village. And she says, I can't wait to tell Grandfather. And we're all feeling happy, super happy, and suddenly... We're back in Fitora. Sorius, Boreas Grey Rat is on his knees. And he's surrounded by four guards. And a guy, there's like three guys in front of him. One of them is a bald, you can just tell the dude's a bad guy. He's a bald dickhead named Darius. Anybody with a, with a name like Darius from, you know, evil Roman stuff. You can tell he's going to be evil. They basically say that because he failed to respond to the appropriately to the mana disaster, he has to be it, it, chaos ensued with the people, and he has to be immediately executed. And there, this asshole Darius is just like, I'll see the things of a tour. He's laughing, but <laughs> me, me, me. Um, and we have people in the balcony. There are probably other rulers of this place. One is a woman with blonde hair. She has to be important. One's another guy. You can tell, if you watched anime for a while, you know, based on how good a design looks, the person's probably important, one way or another. So, everyone's looking on. Guy brings out the sword. And in Sorius' mind, because he's not saying anything, he calls Darius a scum, but he's thinking to himself, if my granddaughter Eris, my darling granddaughter Eris, if you are out there somewhere, I hope that you, I wish that you live happily and in happiness. And he's wishing her happiness. He's beheaded. Now we, they do a good job of stopping you from seeing the beheading because there's a butterfly. And I should have paid attention to this because in Japanese mythology the, the, and folklore, butterflies are either the spirits of someone or they're carrying the spirits of someone to the afterlife and we saw a butterfly earlier in this episode that looked exactly like the same one next to green the ones that would open up the wings i was going crazy over and this butterfly crosses right as his head is getting cut off 
because we get to see his head from the outside. We do see we they, they don't have us in there. They have us looking on the outside when it's time for him to be beheaded. And that is where the episode ends. The next episode is supposed to be called Slow Life in Doldia Village. But the the ending song with this conclusion makes me even sadder. Holy hell, this show. You had me going from, oh man, I hope Rudy doesn't do anything rash, to... Oh man, Rudy, are you gonna are you gonna fight this dude? You gonna you gonna get your balls up? You said that you wasn't gonna be a, a POS in this world if you since you were given a second chance. And he wasn't a POS and he had a great victory and he got his his crew, his family, his friends are back. It's a good tale to tell. And unbeknownst to them, they do not realize how big this magical disaster was. And I really need them to meet up with Roxy so they can know just how bad this was. Holy hell, this was bad. And I don't even know. I just... When they make it back, because there's no way they're not going to make it back. When they make it back, there's going to be a lot of bad shit going on. I don't even know if Eris is going to have a home. They're probably going to have to fight back for that throne. Man, the Japanese do a great job with high fantasy. Of course, once again, I cannot give this a rating because every episode before this was great. Every episode lends to the next episode. And the episode, the, the, the next episode, this episode is probably going to lend to it. And they, they just do a great job of piggybacking one over another. But man, man. I do appreciate one thing. While uh, Rudeus, because we don't know what he who what he was called before his uh, his reincarnation, and if I find it funny that it's called Jobless Reincarnation because he had no job, so now he's reincarnated. Um, excuse me. Uh, I do like that he still has room to grow. Like he's still not good with confrontation, but he can't sit idly by. And watch atrocities happen. Especially while he actually has power to do something about it. So I continue to look forward to watching him grow. Uh, slight spoiler. This is his early years. I cannot wait for the middle years. I just. If you thought this was great man. I The stuff that they got coming up. I cannot wait for it. So that's my review. Please let me know how you felt about the episode. What was your best what was your favorite part? What are you looking forward to? I'm I'm actually looking forward to Roxy, the, the two groups meeting up and them having to, them hearing about what's happened to Fator and being like, so what are we gonna do? I hope Gisil Gis Gisaline, I hope she's okay. She already had one eye and a big ass slash mark in her six pack abs. I sincerely hope like she hasn't lost an arm or something. <sighs> Again, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Hit that like button, please. If you're not subscribed here, give me a subscribe. That subscribe button's right there. If you are subscribed here, hit the notification bell to be notified of more videos like this. We do these every Sunday. We're going to keep going until, unless they, they cancel Mushiko Tensei Jobless Reincarnation, I'm still going to keep going. So, share the video so others can see what great time we're having. I appreciate you guys so much for taking time out of your Sunday to spend time listening to me rave about this wonderful anime. As always, please be good, be blessed, wash your hands, wear a mask, be good to yourself, and be good to others. Either way, don't be a jerk. I will definitely see you next time.